Good morning. Welcome to our uh, Sunday morning Bible study hour. Um, obviously, we're doing things a little different with the uh, whole situation in our country. Um, and uh, so I'm going to be doing the Bible studies on Sunday mornings uh, for the time being. Um, currently, uh, Dave had been doing a study for the adult class on the uh, Feasts of Israel. And in the youth class, I had been doing a study on Baptist doctrine. But we're going to put both of those on hold for now. And we're going to start a new study. And uh, for this study, I'm going to be going over some of the uh, lesser known characters of the Bible. And uh, I used Pastor Sargent's uh, book that he uh, published called Practical Lessons from the Lives of Men and Women of the Bible. Uh, as kind of my basis for this. And I didn't stick completely to his outlines, but that's where I got most of my source material, uh, just to put all that out there and not uh, infringe on any copyrights or anything. Um, so we'll be looking at, at some of those, and some of the characters of the Bible are, are good examples that we can follow, um, that they have attributes in their lives that we can apply that um, will help us to in our walk with the Lord. And others are uh, examples that we probably wouldn't want to follow. Uh, those would be uh, examples that we can look at as a, a warning, uh, an example of what we should not follow. And... Um, to stay away from that path. And this morning we're going to study one of those um, who was a bad example. And the, uh, the uh, subject of this morning's lesson is Ahithophel. Now Ahithophel was an Old Testament character. He uh, lived during the time of King David and uh, he was um, just a important figure in the kingdom at that time. So we're going to read a little bit about him. Now I'm going to have a lot of scriptures in this uh, lesson, and I'm going to, I have them all written out here, so I'm going to read through them. Uh, you, you may not have enough time to follow along, but if you need to, you can pause the video and go to it. I'll try to give you a little bit of time, so if you're quick on the draw with your Bible, uh, you could probably follow along. Uh, but let's get into the, the uh, lesson this morning, and we're going to start off by looking at the story of Ahithophel. First thing we see is that Ahithophel was David's trusted advisor. Uh, if we look in 1 Chronicles chapter 27, uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 27, verses 32 through 34, we see a mention of Ahithophel here. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles 27, 32 through 34, also Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, a wise man, and a scribe, and Jehiel, the son of Hakamoni, was with the king's son, and Ahithophel was the king's counselor, and Hushai the archite was the king's companion, and after Ahithophel was Jehoiada, the son of Benaiah, and Abathar, and the general of the king's army was Joab. So here in this passage, um, the Bible is just kind of listing off uh, David's cabinet, if you will. Uh, he had all these different advisors, uh, companions, um, and people that he relied on, people that he had around him to help him uh, run the kingdom. And Ahithophel is listed here as the king's counselor. We can also uh, see more about that if we uh, turn over to 2 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 23. We see that Ahithophel's counsel wasn't just any counsel, and his counsel uh, was like that of God. 2 Samuel chapter 16 verse 23 says, And the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. So here we see that Ahithophel was so greatly respected, he was so wise in his counsel, that people almost considered his word um, equal with the word of God. That's how much he was respected. Uh, you might have heard the saying, um, his word is like gospel, or, or people say things like that. And that's the way that Ahithophel was looked at. Um, he was just a super wise man and well-respected within the kingdom. So Ahithophel, uh, kind of like with the, the royals um, today in Britain, how they're all uh, interrelated. I was talking with my wife about that earlier today, actually, um, trying to figure out how Prince Philip was related to uh, the queen, because um, they're like cousins and all that. But it was the same way in um, David's time. They had kind of this royal inner circle. And uh, we find here in 2 Samuel chapter 11, actually there's a couple different spots we have to look, but we, we find that Ahithophel was the grandfather of Bathsheba. Um, 
If we look in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 2 through 4, um, we get the first clue to this here. 2 Samuel chapter 11, starting in verse 2, says, And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. The woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness. She returned unto her house. So here we see that Bathsheba is the daughter of Eliam. Now turn over to 2 Samuel chapter 23. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 23 and verse 34. Now this passage here um, is a list of uh, David's best warriors. He had 30 warriors that were uh, kind of like his, um, his right-hand men. They were always about him. Um, they were very experienced in war, very mighty men. And the Bible is listing them off here. And in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 34, it says, Eliphelet, the son of Ashabai, the son of the Machagite, and Eliam, the son of Ahithophel, the Gileonite. So we see in 2 Samuel 11 that Bathsheba is the daughter of Eliam. And then in 2 Samuel 23, we see that Eliam is the son of Ahithophel. So um, it follows that since um, Ahithophel was the father of Eliam and Eliam was the father of Bathsheba, that Ahithophel was the, the father or the grandfather of Bathsheba. And so that kind of explains why she was there in close proximity to the, the palace, because they all would have been kind of congregated together. All of the, the royals and the high ups would have been kind of in that area. And so David was able to, to see her there. And of course, he committed that great sin that was the biggest stain upon his kingdom. Now, the reason that Ahithophel became um, notorious uh, was because he deserted to join the rebellion of Absalom. And we see this in 2 Samuel chapter 15, verses 12 through 13. So to kind of set the stage here, um, Absalom uh, was the son of David, and he was a very popular uh, young man. He was very good looking. Um, all the people uh, just loved him, and he decided that he wanted to be king. And so he was going to try to overthrow David, his father, and take control of the throne. Uh, so he started this rebellion. And we see here in 2 Samuel 15 that Ahithophel joined him. Uh, 2 Samuel 15, verse 12 says, And Absalom sent for Ahithophel, the Gileonite, David's counselor, from his city, even from Gilo, well, he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy was strong, for the people increased continually with Absalom. And there came a messenger to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. So Ahithophel um, turned against his, uh, his king, against David, and was involved in this uh, rebellion. So once this rebellion started, uh, David was fearing for his life, so he and some of his uh, close men just hightailed it out of the city with nothing but the clothes on their back. Um, and Ahithophel stayed behind, and he was advising Absalom now. So if you turn over to 2 Samuel chapter 16, verses 20 through 22, you could see what some of his advice was here. And Ahithophel, he advised a strike directly aimed at David. Uh, and he did this in a couple different ways. First of all, he did it in a personal way. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 20 says, Then said Absalom to Ahithophel, Give counsel among you what we shall do. And Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Go in unto thy father's concubines, which he had left to keep the house, and all Israel shall hear that thou art abhorred of thy father. Then shall the hands of all that are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom went in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Um, so this was uh, directly a result of the advice of Ahithophel. He told uh, Absalom to do this wicked thing to basically show David up and uh, uh, show how Absalom uh, was in control now, and he was able to do uh, this wicked thing uh, to David's concubines. 
But it went beyond just that. As If you turn over a couple pages there to 2 Samuel 17, uh, we see that uh, he wanted more than to, to just get David out of there. He wanted David dead. 2 Samuel chapter 17, verses 1 through 4 says, Moreover, Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out 12,000 men, and I will arise and pursue after David this night, and I will come upon him while he is weary and weak handed, and I will make him afraid. All the people that are with him shall flee, and I will smite the king only, and I will bring back all the people unto thee. The man whom thou seekest is as if all returned. So all the people shall be in peace, and the saying pleased Absalom well, and all the elders of Israel. Uh, so we see that Ahithophel uh, was, was saying, okay, David's on the run. We should go after him, and we should kill him right now. However, um, Ahithophel's advice was turned down, and he was defeated due to the, the loyalty of one man. Now, we won't read the whole thing here, uh, but in 2 Samuel uh, 17, if you keep reading down there, there was another man um, that stayed behind, uh, and this is Hushai, and it, if you remember what we read before, Hushai was the companion of David. So he stayed behind as well with Absalom, and after they asked advice of Ahithophel, they asked Hushai what his advice would be. And Hushai, uh, he was still loyal to David, but he stayed behind to just kind of be a spy almost. And uh, so he came up with this idea that he would uh, create a stall tactic to allow David to escape. So he said, he said basically, um, well, Ahithophel is, is too rash. He wants to go chase after him. But you know, David has all these really strong, mighty warriors with him. We should wait. We should wait until all of the soldiers come to join us, all the different tribes send all their men, and we build up our strength, and then we go after him. And all he was really doing was giving David time to go. And if you look down at uh, 2 Samuel 17, verses 14 through 16, you see that there. It says, And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the Archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel, for the Lord hath appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel. So the counsel of Ahithophel would have worked, but the Lord didn't want David killed. Uh, so the Lord spoiled that. Uh, so... Um, for the Lord had appointed the, to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. Then said Hushai unto Zadok and to Abathar the priest, Thus and thus did Ahithophel counsel Absalom and the elders of Israel, and thus and thus have I counseled. Now therefore send quickly and tell David, saying, Lodge not this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily pass over, lest the king be swallowed up and all the people that are with him. Um, so Absalom listened to Hushai, and that gave David the opportunity that he needed to get across the river and, uh, and save his life, basically. So that kind of left Ahithophel in a bad spot. Um, I think Ahithophel kind of saw the writing on the wall once David escaped. He knew that David would build up his strength and come back. And we see that Ahithophel actually commits suicide. In uh, verse 23 there, 2 Samuel 17, it says, and when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order and hanged himself and died and was buried in the sepulcher of his father. So that's the sad story of Ahithophel. Now we're going to look at a couple of, of applications here. The first thing that we want to look at is the prophetic lesson of, a, of Ahithophel. Um, Ahithophel has been referred to as the Judas Iscariot of the Old Testament. Um, Psalm 41.9 uh, is both a reflective uh, looking back on Ahithophel as well as a prophetic preview of the son of David, Jesus Christ. Psalm 41.9 says, Yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. And we can see that there are a lot of, of parallels between uh, Judas Iscariot and Ahithophel. First of all, both of them had the trust of their master. If you turn to uh, John chapter 13, 29, you can see that um, Judas had the trust of Jesus. John chapter 13, verse 29 says, For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So Judas was the treasurer of the disciples. Now, 
you don't make somebody a treasurer if you don't trust them. Uh, if you think a guy is, is crooked and shady, you're not going to give him the money because you're going to be afraid he's going to run off with it. So Judas was, was a trusted. And obviously Ahithophel was, was trusted as well as he was the wise counselor of David. So both had the trust of their master and both of them were involved in God's work. Um, obviously Judas was involved in God's work. He was one of the disciples. And um, Jesus' disciples didn't just sit around listening to him. Um, they were actively involved in the ministry. At different points, he, he actually sent them out on their own to uh, be preaching. Um, and I, th I believe in, in some areas it says that the dis disciples um, were involved in baptizing people. And it doesn't say anywhere that Judas wasn't involved in those things. So Judas was involved in God's work. And ah Ahithophel was in involved in God's work too. If you look in Psalm chapter 55, verses 12 through 14, um, we see another uh, instance here in the Psalms where David is referring to Ahithophel. Psalm chapter 55, starting in verse 12, it says, For it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man my equal, my guide, and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. So it, here it, it, it's probably referring to Ahithophel. It doesn't uh, mention him by name, but he's talking about a man of his equal, his guide, and his acquaintance that uh, turned his back on him. And it says that they walked into the house of God in company. Uh, so there was obviously some worship, um, some, some religious practice that uh, David and Ahithophel um, did together. They were involved in God's work. And also, uh, both Judas and Ahithophel betrayed their masters. Uh, that's kind of obvious. You know, Judas um, sold Jesus to uh, the priest for 30 pieces of silver. And Ahithophel, we just uh, read about what he did when he betrayed his master. Um, another thing to note is um, they were both confounded by God's purpose. Now, when I say confounded, I mean that, you know, they had something that they were doing in their mind for whatever reason, uh, maybe to get money for Judas, uh, maybe to get revenge for Ahithophel. They thought they were doing something in their own power, but God had a purpose in what they were doing. Uh, we read earlier that the Lord had appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel. Um, he had a purpose for that. He was trying to bring down Absalom. And in Acts chapter 2, verses 23 through 24, uh, we read that God had a purpose for Judas, too. Uh, it says there, Acts 2, verse 23 through 24, him being delivered, talking of Jesus, by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. So it's the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. God had a plan, um, and it's important for us to remember that um, God is in control. And we might have our ideas, and evil men like Judas and Ahithophel may have their ideas of what they're doing. Uh, but God has a purpose, and uh, we need to keep that in mind. And then finally, the last nail in the coffin of, of these parallel between Judas and Ahithophel is that they both hung themselves. We read earlier about how Ahithophel hung himself. And in Matthew 27, 5, it says, and he, talking about Judas, uh, cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Uh, so that's the prophetic parallel that we can, can draw from Ahithophel as kind of the Judas of the Old Testament. But what about a personal lesson? Uh, something that we can apply to our, our lives today. Something that, that we can learn from Ahithophel um, an as an example of, of how not to act and uh, things to watch out for in our own lives to be, make sure that we don't end up that way. And I think uh, what we see about Ahithophel is that his, the counsel that he gave to Absalom indicated that he was out for revenge. Back in 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 21, it said, we read this earlier, And Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Go in unto thy father's concubines, which he hath left to keep the house and all Israel shall hear that thou art a horde of thy father. So he advised Absalom to commit these wicked deeds, these, this, these unseemly things. 
Um, and, you know, that kind of goes beyond just like political intrigue. You know, kings have always been overthrown. Uh, people want power, so they get rid of the king so they can take power. But he wasn't after power here. Ahithophel was, was trying to strike at David personally. Um, and it's interesting that this kind of reflects what David had done to Bathsheba, uh, his granddaughter. Um, you know, David had seen her on the roof and taken advantage of her. And so here is Ahithophel saying to Absalom, take David's concubines up onto the roof and, and do this wicked thing to them in front of all of Israel. Um, he was getting back at David in, in like manner. Uh, we also see that Ahithophel personally wanted to kill David. Um, he didn't just want to get rid of David and get him off the throne. He personally wanted to go out and kill David. We read earlier in 2 Samuel 17, um, we don't, don't need to read it again, but 2 Samuel 17, 1 through 3, uh, look at some of the things that he said. He said, I will arise and pursue after David. I will come upon him while he is weary and weak-handed. I will smite the king only. He wasn't even trying to kill all the king's men. He just wanted to kill the king and bring all the men back. <laughs> and he just wanted the king out of there. Uh, it was a personal vendetta. And it's kind of funny because I don't know how old he was, but obviously he had an adult granddaughter at the time. So he had to be up there in years. And here he is trying to lead this army out to personally kill the king. Um, so Ahithophel had this bitterness in him, this, uh, this rage against the king. And Ahithophel is an example of the results of bitterness. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verse 15, and we'll look and see what the Bible has to say about bitterness. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15 says, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. You know, this is what bitterness does to us. It, uh, it takes root in our lives. Um, it gets in there, it festers, we let it build, and it overtakes us. Um, and as the Bible said there, that root of bitterness springs up, and um, lost my spot. Sorry, maybe we could edit this out. Um, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up, trouble you and thereby many be defiled. So that's what bitterness does. It takes root and it springs up if you let it there unfestered and many things get defiled. And we see that um, in the life of Ahithophel. Many things got defiled and that can happen to us as well. Uh, if we let bitterness get into us and we start to dwell on things, we don't deal with it. We let it build up and before we know it, it's causing all these problems in our lives. Um, we also see that uh, Ahithophel failed to recognize the grace of God. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 through 32, and we see how we're supposed to respond to the grace of God by letting go of bitterness. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 through 32 says, Let all bitterness and wrath, and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Uh, so we need to think about that in our lives when, when we are tempted to be bitter against someone for something they have done to us. Think about how Christ has forgiven you, the things that he has forgiven you that you've done against him, and uh, let that grace play out in your life and forgive others as Christ has forgiven you. Um, let that bitterness and that wrath and that anger uh, go. Don't let it build up and become malice, as Ahithophel did. And then the other thing we see that Ahithophel handled wrong was he didn't let God control the situation. Uh, he tried to take things into his own hands. Romans chapter 12, verses 19 through 21 says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him, 
If he thirst, give him drink, for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So vengeance belongs to the Lord. It wasn't Ahithophel's job to punish David. Uh, it was God's job to do that, and God did deal with David. Um, and uh, the, uh, the effects of David's sin had long-lasting effects in his life and the lives of his family down through the generations. Um, but that was God's job to do that. It wasn't Ahithophel's job. And when we try to do God's job for him, when we try to become uh, judge, jury, and, and executioner, um, instead of letting God do his job, uh, we get things out of place, and that bitterness builds up in us, and um, nothing good ever comes out of that, as we see with Ahithophel. And then finally, uh, I think the, the conclusion we can make about Ahithophel is that he was bound up by his bitterness. And turn to Acts chapter 8, verse 23. This will be the last verse for this morning. And this is talking about Simon the sorcerer. Acts chapter 8, verse 23. says, For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And, you know, that's what bitterness can do to us. It could take us from a place where, like where Ahithophel was, where he was this revered figure whose, whose wisdom was considered on par with the word of God, and it took him down, it turned him bitter, it turned him evil, and it got him to the place where uh, he was bound up in iniquity and he was outcast like a sorcerer, like we see here in the New Testament. And that's what it's going to do to you as well. If you're not careful, if you let bitterness grow in you, if you let bitterness take control of your life, if you don't let God deal with it, and if you don't uh, let that go and forgive. So that is the uh, first in this series that we'll cover. Uh, hopefully that was a blessing to you and you can uh, learn something from that. I find it fascinating to go back and make all these connections uh, between these different characters that you know you don't hear a lot about them. But if you compare different scriptures and, and you can start to piece their story together and you can learn a lot from them. So that's, that's all we have for this morning. Um, We're going to take a, a few minutes break. Uh, we'll have the, the next video should be loading um, here in a few minutes. So if you need to go use the bathroom or do whatever, uh, you could do that. And we'll have Pastor Castile's message uh, available for you to watch uh, very soon. Thank you.